Hello to our travel advisor partners. It's Richard again. You know, we're getting pretty good at using the iPhone to do these recordings, but I still wish I was back in my office. On the other hand, my wife is more anxious to see me in the barber's chair. I thought that this might be a good time to talk about some of the information that we're going to need to prepare for for re-entering service. We've always believed that knowledge is key to preparation, and COVID-19 is a very complicated topic. We wanted to help you in your task of informing your clients. And therefore, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things we're doing to help you in your quest to be better informed. Now, we all know that this time, while our society is in lockdown, has been highly vexing. Fortunately, the isolation seems to be working exactly as it should, and the spread appears to be getting contained in much of the country. But this success has come with a heavy price. Our businesses are shut down, and we've all had to take steps we would have considered unthinkable only a few weeks ago. Over the last three weeks, our country has eliminated more jobs than it created during the previous 10 years. A lot of people are hurting, including most of you. As I've said before, it's going to take a while before we can reopen. And even as we enter the reopening process, it will need to be gradual. We can't just squander all the containment we've achieved by suddenly opening everything up without careful thought. Of course, opening up has its risks. Our objective in flattening the curve was to flatten the curve, not to eliminate it. We needed to slow the spread of the disease until we had better testing, better treatments, and better medical facilities to handle it. Our objective was to keep the numbers low enough that we could properly handle them. And it looks like that strategy has worked pretty well. But there's no doubt that as we reopen society, there will inevitably be new cases that come up. New people will become infected, and some people are going to succumb to the illness. The difference now is that we will have more testing, we will have better therapies to treat the disease, and we will have the medical equipment and facilities that were in short supply before. There are lots of reasons this particular virus has proven so difficult to predict and to contain. It's more contagious than initially thought and has a longer incubation period than expected. In addition, the fact that so many of its victims feel little or no symptoms actually exacerbates the challenge of containing it. And governments around the world weren't as prepared to handle it as we might have wished. But the world has done a lot of catching up, and now we need to look forward. There is no perfect solution. Opening too soon or without proper controls will allow the resurgence of the disease. Alternatively, opening too late or with too many restrictions will cause more economic pain and suffering. Either extreme causes a totally unacceptable level of human suffering. It's a difficult balance that needs to be reached carefully. We need to be guided by science, not intuition. But we also need to remember that there is no single scientifically correct answer. Our experts, the virologists, the epidemiologists, the infectious disease specialists, etc., simply don't yet know enough to give clear answers, and they can't balance these conflicting goals. So if the next phase is to be a gradual loosening of restrictions, how do we prepare for it? And especially, what do we in the travel and tourism industry do? I would suggest three perspectives on the things we need to do. My first perspective is that we need to do what our governments tell us to do. Whatever we do, the only truly bad answer is if we each do our own thing. Only by following a consistent and coordinated pattern can we hope to achieve a good outcome. No one path is perfect, but a coordinated path is better than a disjointed one. My second perspective is that we need to understand that our world has changed. People are rightly concerned about health risk, and we need to address that aggressively. We need to develop ways to assure people that their health is being protected in the best manner possible. This isn't simply a question of how we explain things. We need to change the way we operate in a fundamental way. What was reasonable a month ago is no longer adequate. We already have more extensive processes and procedures than almost any facility you might know. But it ain't enough. We have to do better. And we can't just meet the minimum standards. We can't just be good enough. Good enough just isn't good enough. We have to go further. The public's trust is in our hands, and we have to deliver on that. At Royal Caribbean, we're using this time of the suspension to learn as much as we can about this disease 
and how to contain it. We are using this time to consult with experts in the field. We're trying to understand the science. We're using this time to develop new ways of doing things to protect the health of our guests and our crew. Our objective is to make our ships not just good enough, but the best they can be. We are intensely focused on this because we realize that there is no higher priority for our industry. We're not taking a wait and see attitude, nor are we pretending everything will just go back to normal. There is a new normal now and everyone at Royal Caribbean is committed to raising to that challenge. We'll be describing more about this in the near future. My third perspective is that there's a critical role for you, the travel advisor. Your clients are not only concerned about health issues, they're hungry for information, and you can satisfy that hunger. One of the reasons that you've always been such an important partner to all of us in the cruise industry is your expertise, your ability to advise and to inform your clients. As we emerge from this suspension, your knowledge, your expertise, your advice will be more important than ever before. So I recommend you use this time to prepare yourself. Learn all you can about this virus and how the cruise lines are responding. Become sufficiently knowledgeable that you become an even more indispensable part of the process. That makes you more valuable to your clients and advances all of our interests. Now, to help you, Royal Caribbean is working on ways to provide you the specific information that you want and you need to be able to better advise your clients. We're starting this effort with a primer on testing. Testing is one of the most important factors in our country's effort to emerge successfully from this pandemic. It is by far the most important element in isolating the disease without isolating society. Adequate testing should allow our society to keep the case numbers low and identify and isolate the pockets that will inevitably arise. A month or so ago, we were only able to test a few hundred people a day in the U.S. Now we're testing over 150,000 every day, and that figure is rising. But the testing landscape has become very confusing, with different tests for different purposes and different methodologies. Your clients are confused, and you need the right information to advise them. To help you in this, we're putting together an information pack on testing to synthesize the best information out there in a way we can all understand. We're not medical experts, but we have consulted with experts and we have read voraciously to inform ourselves. We want to help you by providing information that you can use. We also recognize that progress in this area is so rapid that the information we provide will be constantly changing and have to be updated. But we want to help you as much as we can, and this is a first example. So, this is my formula for all of us in the cruise industry. First, follow the rules. Second, ensure our ships raise the bar far higher on protecting the health of our guests and our crew. And third, keep your clients informed so that they will feel more confident when the suspension is lifted. Meanwhile, be safe out there and don't forget to wash your hands.